the aftermath of the invalid fight is one of very few times in which the game goes completely silent, and I didn't want to ruin the intended effect there. But we're here in the Aqua Marina, and I've rushed straight to the first combat room, which is where we'll be seeing the game's strangest secret by far. Very shortly, I'm going to start doing uppercuts here on the ground floor. Pay close attention as soon as that happens, because when one lands, a lot of things are going to happen very quickly. So that was Neko, who appeared in the bottom right corner. He's one of two cats who works at Ska Studios. The other being Gato, black cat we saw a porch of in the Grim Tower. And as soon as he popped up, I hit the start button and that transported me to this multiple boss fight. With human heads. I believe the head on the Cretan to be James Silva's, although I cannot say that with any certainty. And I don't even have a guess as to whose the other head is. This is a fairly difficult fight. Those two bosses make the ground level complete mayhem. And as soon as one is killed, a human-headed murderfly spawns in. Also not quite sure who that is, unfortunately. And as we can see, this fight is much too difficult for me. I have to bump things down to a lower difficulty. Pretty Princess mode is unlocked by dying three times, supposedly on easy, but I unlocked it by doing it on ninja. Perhaps any difficulty besides normal will unlock it. And here's what it looks like. The entire game is pink with floating hearts. Right over here is a secret I missed on the first run, with a Charlie murder poster on it. And the spider bead. Spider bead increases the damage of the blade magic, which is already a very highly damaging magic. So we're gonna try it out. As you can see, I've mastered how to run on the ceiling. It's a matter of angling the control stick 45 degrees away from the wall and towards the ceiling. Not so much rolling it towards the ceiling right as you meet it. As we can see the shotgun, as well as the exploded victims of the shotgun, fire hearts all over the place. Instead of blood, it's rainbows. Let's check out some of the executions. Very nice. I especially like the shotgun. There we go. And there's Neko again. Transports us to a pink version. The darkness has been lifted. The walls and ceilings are still there. And with the darkness gone, we can see the fish still floating around in the background. There's the upgraded blade magic damage. I would have expected to do a lot more here on this low difficulty. But it's still getting the job done. The main change to actual difficulty here on Pretty Princess is that we take virtually no damage. Just get hammered by these incredibly damaging boss moves and nothing. We can eventually die, but you basically have to set the controller idle and wait around for a couple of minutes. And 
now that the threat has been removed from this fight. Dealing with it quite handily. All that remains is the creep. Trying out the painkiller ammo a little bit. But I'm not very good with it at the moment. I don't actually know any of its combos. Even still a lone Cretan in a large room would be easy even on ninja difficulty. And with him beheaded, check out our prize. It's the achievable speed. We'll be learning what that does eventually. And taking one last victory lap around in this room. Fire a few celebratory hard gun blasts. And we're back to ninja difficulty. And we can see that we still have our new beads. And I'm putting on the math bead for now. It increases damage based on our combo multiplier. It's probably the second best damage increasing bead after the hacksaw bead. We have a whole ton of money, so I've maxed out Conviction, the Painkiller, and the Machine Gun Arm. Only a scant few upgrades remaining. And returning to this room for yet a third time. We're gonna do it properly this time. First wave is nothing but ninjas. Basically the sort of thing we saw back in the Land Cruiser Stadium. I wonder if the platform in the middle of the room here is still there in the boss fight world. Forgot to check. This room is a little bit more interesting on samurai difficulty. There's an enemy that only spawns on Samurai difficulty in this room. It's nothing too exciting though, it's only invisible blue ninjas. But they blend in a little better with the background. It adds another wrinkle. So we're on to the second phase. Still nothing but ninjas so far. Kinda miss that hard gun. Trying out a little more painkiller since that is pretty much Yuki's iconic weapon. See it in pretty much all the game's official art. And for good reason, it's quite awesome. The executions are very grisly, but they're a bit overlong for how often you'll be seeing them. That can be a bit annoying when you're getting used to the weapon. Finally, a different sort of enemy has spawned in. Chainsaw guys. They could have spawned in any time during the second phase, but they happen to be the last two enemies. Our new bead loadout makes pretty quick work of them. We're doing a lot more damage than we used to be. So before we go where they told us to, we want to go over here to get a present near this locked door. We have to come here while the door is still locked and we don't have the key or else the present will despawn. We got the brain bead. Makes you way smarter than everyone else. What that supposedly means is that it makes your character's head slightly larger. If that is the case, it makes a very, very slight difference. I can hardly tell. And up here we have
have soldiers and men in black. And flamethrowers. Even with our new beats, flamethrower cyborgs seem to take quite a quite a beating. That's why I like to use blade magic on them. Everything else, though, falls apart very quickly. Bring a quick end to this fight. We now have the key to that locked door we saw. But as we head back that way, we get ambushed by a new type of enemy. The shark bots. They're basically identical to the uber tank boss fight. They do have much, much lower health. Much like the creeper clones that we saw last level. Completely on their own, they are pretty easy to deal with, even in multiples. But we'll be seeing a little later that they combo well with other faster enemies. Fully charged Righteous Shockwave instantly brings them to executable range. Finishing that fight has unlocked a solo for us. was the final solo in the game. You can tell we're getting pretty close to the end now. There were six unique solos in this game compared to the three in the first game. And the bead we got is the shield bead. It protects you a little bit, which I assume means a general increase to defense. I much prefer the damage beads. Not taking too many risks with these shark bots now because the faster enemies will not let us charge our righteous shockwave as easily. And once things get really crowded, it gets a bit hectic. Not especially difficult, but it's pretty fun. And we get more squid chips. Finally gonna actually take a look at what they do. They restore a skull, so I've eaten one So that key will let us advance into the marina itself. Which I guess is what this is. Which isn't technically what a marina is, but oh well. 
bunch of invisible ninjas here. They stand out like a sore thumb against the blue background with their red glow. And once again, the two chainsaw guys are the last two to spawn in. Smart to keep them up in the air because they're completely defenseless up there. It's also a good idea to keep them close together because they hit each other all the time. And that air combo I just did was a light attack followed by a heavy. And the chainsaw punch that it ends with is very, very powerful. It's a combo that Conviction shares with the Kamikaze, and I think it's one of Kamikaze's better aerial combos. And there's a headless corpse here. Can't be blamed for that. There's yet another poster of Charlie Murder, and a locked door for which we do not have the key. The poster is not the key, so I guess we'll have to go find it. Or not. Of course, it is the boss fight. A suddenly appearing squid has resurrected the headless corpse. That's all it does, it doesn't have any attacks of its own. Which is kind of unfortunate. But the swordsman is quite a formidable opponent. He's got a lot of combos that are only interruptible by doing an execution on him. Summons Sharkbots as his allies, which you can turn to your advantage by using the blade magic because they take many, many hits from it. And if you're using the math bead, that increases your damage by quite a bit. And also, the blade magic itself does a lot of damage. It took off about a quarter of the squid's health and killed it for us. That brings us yet another step closer to our final assassination target.